you must have a minimum comprehensive ranking system score of 300. In your Express Entry profile right now, if you know that you did not indicate Alberta as one of the provinces that you love to move to, go and do that now. This one is where it gets really juicy. Strategically put the job that you know is in demand here in Alberta as your primary occupation so that you will be considered tickets. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is YMC. If you are seeing my face for the very first time, hi. I am a YouTuber based in Canada, Edmonton to be precise. I make videos about immigrating to Canada, sharing my life through vlogs, and also just making sure that you are updated on how to come into Canada and not just to come in, but also to settle in nicely. So if these are the kind of contents you love to watch, consider subscribing, okay? But today's video is very, very, very impromptu. I was supposed to post a vlog but I got this news from a friend and I decided that you know what I need to update you guys like ASAP. Alberta currently launched a new pathway sort of like a new way to apply for provincial nomination instead of the usual route through which applicants could get nominated through Alberta. So what that means is when you create an Express Entry profile, typically you get a question that asks you if you would like to be nominated by, you know, any province or if you have been nominated by a province. If you have been nominated by a province, you select yes and then you give all the information. But if you've not, then you can select no. And then there's another place where you can give consent to allow whether Ontario or British Columbia, I believe, to reach out to you if they deem your application fit for a particular pathway that they are running at the moment. So that is one way to get a provincial nomination. But right now, Alberta is taking it a step further to make it more accessible for applicants. And we're going to talk about it. So this video is going to be divided into three different parts. The first one is talking about this particular program. The second one is talking about the eligibility breakdown. And the third one will be talking about the points breakdown. So what you must have to get points because it's a points-based system whereby as you have those human capital factors that they're looking for, your points start to build up, to sum up to a particular point. Right now, the application is opened, but there is no draw yet. Draws will be later in the month. So that's why I'm doing this video quickly so that if you find yourself eligible for this program, then you can go ahead like you don't have to wait okay because my friend sent it to me two days ago i tried logging into the link but then i realized that i had a lot of people ahead of me so i think i got something like you have over three thousand people in queue before you so don't close that window blah 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 so you can tell that people were waiting <laughs> for this particular announcement and i think it was announced as an august that something like this will be happening in september slash october so yeah let us quickly go into the video let us talk about alberta advantage immigration program aaip so i'll be using aip a lot just know that that's what it means because it's a mouthful it's an economic immigration program that nominates people to reside permanently in alberta to live to work to reside with family or even themselves this program is designed in order to nominate people that are skilled enough to fill job shortages or that are planning to buy or start a business now better so it's divided into two categories the first one will be workers category and then entrepreneur category so the workers category will be those people that intend to work i'll explain more later in the video the other category are for those people that intend to start a business in Alberta. So I'm going to touch on that just a little bit because I believe that if that is your intent, then you should probably go on the website and read a lot more on that. But I would focus mainly on people that intend to come work here. So when I was going through all this information, at first I thought, especially for the human selection factors, whether you have experience, your IELTS band and all of that, I was thinking, I think this favors people outside of Canada, but then I was on Twitter not too long ago and then I saw Olu of Canada. For those people that know Olu of Canada, like there's no way you will not even know him if you are trying to immigrate to Canada. He posted on his Twitter and said, we did a quick calculation and it looks good for those outside of Alberta too, if they have a relative in Alberta and get a job outside Edmonton or Calgary. When I saw this, I'm like, oh, well, I might as well talk about this. Like I said earlier, the cutoff is not known yet for each category, but right now applications are ongoing. I'll leave the link in the description box so that it helps you better i just tried signing in again and i was redirected to apply for the program that is the summary of the alberta advantage immigration program so let us go to the eligibility criteria breakdown 
The eligibility cutoff for express entry is now tier 3, which is equivalent to skill level B. I'd advise that you should go check the NOC breakdown to know what that means. So we have NOC 0, 1, 2, 3. So tier 3 is the eligibility cutoff for this particular pathway. So for this program, they have to open an express entry profile already, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And then Alberta will now send you a notification of interest letter or invite candidates to apply to the program depending on the selection factors or pathways pathway design. So this pro profile information is self-declared by candidates in the Federal Express Entry Pool. What that means is when you were filling your Express Entry information, you had given them the name of your role and then you've already indicated your NOC. Then all of that now trickles down to whether or not you are part of the people that they are looking for. Yeah, one thing I noticed is that there is priority for people that are in agriculture, construction, tourism and hospitality. So that is like the priority sectors, not to say that other people in other roles or occupation will not be taken but this is the priority for now so i think they're doing construction in my area there is noise so i hope that this microphone is able to sieve out the noise but if not please pardon me so that's what i wanted to quickly point out the priority sectors for the eligible healthcare professions under this pathway those are the physicians registered nurses licensed practical nurses nurse practitioners physician assistants occupational therapists physiotherapists clinical social worker and psychologists these professions are also a priority for this program um, so if you fall into one of these categories then you already know that you stand a chance in this program another important thing i wanted to tell you is that the noc code cover many different occupational titles so AAIP that's the program will seek additional information from prospective applicants regarding the occupation identified in the job offer and the regulatory organization's proof of ability to practice the eligible healthcare professional better to ensure that the individual is eligible under this pathway so for instance under the NOC that's the national occupational classification table they might just put something like NOC 10 blah 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 business business managers under business managers there are different roles that falls under that category sometimes your role is not spelled out so you have to look at the job duties and the responsibilities under each roles under the NOC <laughs> I hope I'm not confusing you guys so when you check it then you'll be able to see where your job matches with the title because sometimes the title can be deceiving when the responsibilities and the job duties does not really fit into your current occupation again it's not an exhaustive list of job duties so like i said just try to see a way in which that matches with your noc i hope i'm not confusing because i know that people have reached out to me to say they got an email from ircc when they applied for their express entry and they were told to go back to choose the correct noc so that's why i'm trying to explain that quickly Going back to this eligibility criteria, I'm going to explain some of the minimum requirements and factors that increases your chances of selection. That's based on the category that you are going for. If you receive a notification of interest letter from Alberta and you're interested in being considered for the stream, you must send a copy of the notification of interest letter along with additional information to the AIP by email within two weeks of receiving the letters. Again, I'm going to give you guys the link to all of this so that you would read it and digest it properly so that you can follow all the necessary process. So if you have a family connection here in Alberta, you stand a chance for this program. And when I say stand a chance, I mean that you have like a higher chance you get extra points if your occupation is also a primary occupation in demand in Alberta you stand a higher chance if you are in a dedicated healthcare profession you stand a higher chance if you're applying through the dedicated healthcare pathway accelerated tech pathway law enforcement pathway and the priority sectors that I mentioned earlier that's the agriculture construction tourism and hospitality you also stand a higher chance you guys don't sleep on this so so for the minimum requirement, you would receive a notification of interest letter or be considered for this pathway if you have an active express entry profile in the federal express entry pool. And I explained that earlier. This is not even a new information because if you're coming to Canada, you already know that you have to create an express entry profile. That is also you going through the comprehensive ranking system or score or whereby you kind of know your points and if you're eligible you're automatically redirected to create an express entry account so i'm sure you guys already know that second requirement is you must meet the criteria of at least 
one of the federal immigration programs managed by Express Entry. So it could be either Canadian Experience Class, Federal Skilled Trade Program, Federal Skilled Workers Program. I've talked extensively on these three pathway and I'll leave the link here for you guys. So make sure to check it out so that you understand it a lot more. And that requirement is if your primary occupation in your Federal Express Entry profile is an occupation in demand included as part of a specific Express Entry stream pathway or if your occupation is identified as an occupation connected to a provincial economic sector or occupational priority. For example, if you were an engineer back in your home country and you've done other jobs and you want to get points for all those jobs, then you would choose the one that is your primary occupation. Typically, people will tell you to go for the job with the highest number of experience as your primary occupation. So put that there and then other jobs can fall under the secondary occupation. What that means is strategically put the job that you know is in demand here in Alberta as your primary occupation so that you will be considered tickets. <laughs> the other requirement is if you intend to and be able to live and work permanently in Alberta and have stated an interest in immigrating permanently in Alberta. So what that also means is in your Express Entry profile right now, if you know that you did not indicate Alberta as one of the provinces that you love to move to, go and do that now. And again, where you are going to see that is where you are asked what province you intend to move to. A lot of times I tell people to tick everything because you never can tell the province that is launching a new pathway and you get considered. You never can tell, right? So always select all <laughs> the provinces so that you get nominated whenever there is an opportunity for you. This one is where it gets really juicy. One of the requirements for this program is that you must have a minimum comprehensive ranking system score of 300. 300, you guys. 300 is like a bonus <laughs> because you guys already know that for the federal skilled workers program and the canadian experience class like for all the skilled programs right now if you don't have at least 500 you already know you don't stand a chance the only way you stand a chance is if you get nominated by province but here we are getting to know that the minimum crs score required for this will be 300 again if you have more than 300 of course that makes you even stand a higher chance this is just a minimum requirement the other one is if your primary occupation is not on the Alberta Opportunity Stream ineligible occupations list and you will see that also in the link that I'm going to give you so that you can access that link and see that your occupation is not part of it because otherwise it makes you ineligible. If you do not have an active nomination under any AAIP stream, then you will be eligible for this one. If you are not currently identified as ineligible to reapply to the AAIP due to misrepresentation, then you'll be eligible for this program. Also, if you are neither a refugee claimant nor subject to a federal appeal or removal process, then you will be eligible for this program. AIP volume of applications or, nation, or nominations for your primary occupation in the current calendar year is considered reasonable to meet provincial economic immigration priorities. Okay. So what are your chances of selection? Factors that increase your chances of selection. The first one would be if you have an Alberta job offer, if you're a graduate of a Canadian post-secondary institution, if you have a parent, child or sibling who is a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident living in Alberta, if French is your first language, you stand a higher chance. If your express entry profile is valid for more than five months, you stand a higher chance. This is the reason why I always tell people to create your express entry profile already. Like once you're done with your program here in Canada or even, you know, out of Canada, create an express entry profile already. Do your English test and get in the pool already because you never can tell. So your express entry profile must be valid for more than five months. So it's, it can be created yesterday and you'll be eligible for this program. That's um, one way to get your point. Family connection, like I mentioned, if you have a family here, parent, child or sibling living in Alberta that is at least 18 years of age, then you get additional points and we'll get to the points breakdown shortly. I already mentioned the dedicated healthcare pathway, your primary occupation as a physiotherapist, licensed nurse, licensed registered nurse, licensed practical nurse, all of that. Also the accelerated tech pathway, I'll say that you should go read more on this one. Also read more on the law enforcement pathway and the priority sectors. For the assessment criteria, the AIP will advise you by email if you are invited to submit an application. And if you are invited to apply, the email will include a link that you must use to submit an application. So it's just 
as if you are applying for provincial nomination. That is everything for the eligibility requirements. So let me quickly talk about the application streams. I'm just going to do an overview on this one. So like I mentioned at the beginning, this AIP is focused on two different categories. We have the employment category, that's the workers category, and we have the entrepreneur category. The employment category, that's the streams for workers, is divided into four streams. Four streams for foreign workers who are living and working in Alberta or plan to live and work here. So the tourism and hospitality stream, the Alberta opportunity stream, Alberta express entry stream, the rural renewal stream. So go through these different streams and see which one aligns perfectly with your occupation and your situation. And when I say situation, I mean your age, IELTS score, employment status or whatever. For the streams for entrepreneurs, we also have four streams for entrepreneurs who plan to live in Canada and buy or start a business in the province. It's divided into four, like I mentioned. We have the rural entrepreneur stream, the graduate entrepreneur stream, the farm stream, foreign graduate entrepreneur stream. Again, go read on them very well so that you see which one you're best suitable for. Now we'll talk about the worker's expression of interest points grid. Don't forget that I mentioned that it's a point-based system. So just like the express entry or comprehensive racket score whereby if your age is between 18 to 29, you get 110 points, the score starts to drop depending on how older you are. Also, if you have worked for a particular period of time, basically a points-based system. Number one, you can only have a maximum of 100 points in all the categories and like i mentioned at the beginning we don't know the cutoff yet so i'm just hoping that you are able to get a very high point so that when the cutoff is announced then you fall within the category for education you have a maximum of 22 points and you can get that based on the highest level of education that you completed so if you have a doctorate degree you have 12 points if you have a master's degree you have 10 points bachelor's degree you have seven points trade certificate you have seven point diploma certificate you have four points and if I, if you have a secondary school certificate you don't have any points the location of the highest level of education completed in canada just like the federal express entry pathway whereby if you studied in canada you have an extra point this one also if you complete your education in alberta you have 10 points if you completed it in another province you have six points so for language the minimum score that you must have to stand a higher chance is band six in the four language competency test which is the listening reading speaking and writing if you have french that's if you also wrote french exam for the listening reading speaking writing you also stand a higher chance as additional points for you and if you are also bilingual you get additional points your work experience in canada if you've worked six months or more in alberta you get 10 points if you've worked six months or more in another province you get six points for the age hmm, if you're 18 to 20 years you get three points for that if you're 21 to 34 years old you get five points which is maximum points you can have in this age factor if you are 35 to 49 years old you get four points if you're 50 years and older you get three points for for family connection now better if you have a family member here a parent grandparent child grandchild sibling aunt uncle niece nephew you get a maximum of eight points in as much as the person is over 18 years of age you get eight points automatically wow eight points might not mean anything to you until you get into the pool and because of a point you are not nominated another factor would be alberta job offer so if you got a job offer for permanent full-time employment in alberta you get 10 points you've got a job offer to work in select alberta rural communities you get six points so if it's an endorsement letter from a designated community in the rural renewal stream job offer under the tourism and hospitality stream job offer under the law enforcement occupation pathway you get six points and if you get a job offer in calgary edmonton no points <laughs> But if you get in rural renewal stream designated communities, that is communities outside of Calgary and Edmonton, then you get five points. So in a way, I'm thinking that if you are in the rural communities, then you stand a higher chance. Okay, so those are the selection factors that I wanted to mention to you. I hope that with this video, you are able to 
kind of understand where or what you should be doing by now what document to put together what information you really require i currently live in alberta and i will tell you that again on a personal note it's a fine balance between a very busy city and a very slow moving city so there's a very very good balance in my opinion i don't want to live in a very well for now i don't want to live in a very fast moving or fast paced city and at the same time i don't want something that is too slow so if that is you then this particular program is for you because alberta is that province that has like that balance again in my opinion don't forget that the ielts score that you need for this is at least band six which is very very doable you could also get band four but that's like you reducing your chances in the pool because your points goes down six or higher gives you 10 points which is the maximum point for the language benchmark and if you have four you get five Five points if you have five you have you get eight points you should be aiming for nothing less than six in my opinion nothing less than seven seven point five so with this one i'll tell you again opportunity meets preparedness or preparation meaning this is why you should always have your things prepared in terms of being in the express entry pool having your english test done and just waiting for any opportunity like this so go into the pool already and start awaiting opportunities like this because this one is far better you never know the province that will also be taking up this kind of pathway next <laughs> and i say that because if you've been following the canadian immigration policies and news and whatever for a while you can tell that when the province starts something it's just about time before other provinces will follow suit so yeah let me know if you have questions in the comment section also if you have more information for us about this pathway let us know in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you guys in my next one bye guys